Hello everyone, hope you are learning well. So in this video, we'll discuss the last problem of lead code weekly contest 335. It's a high level problem. However, you can see the accuracy. Uh, I would say it's a, uh, it's inclined towards a medium to hard level problem, not exactly the level, uh, the fourth level problem that you get in the contest. Okay, so let's see what the problem is trying to say. Number of ways to earn points. Also, I would say the third problem of the same contest is far, far, far better than this one. Okay just because this is more on a trivial side okay if you are aware with some of the dp concepts even the basic ones you are good to go okay so there is a test that has n types of questions you are given an integer target and a zero indexed 2d integer array types where types of i equals to count of i marks of i which indicates that there are count i questions of the ith type and each one of them is worth marks i point okay return the number of ways you can earn exactly target points in the exam since the answer may be too large return it modulo 10 raised to power 9 plus 7 note that questions of the same type are same basically you cannot distinguish between them okay for example if there are three questions of the same type then solving the first second questions is same as solving the first and third questions or second and third question okay relatively big problem statement the crux of the problem is <laughs> you want to obtain these number of marks okay and these are the questions that are given this six six one means that there are six questions six questions of type one and each question if you solve it will give you one marks okay this three two says that there is another question okay uh, let's call it type two which are three questions and each of those will give you two marks similarly two three is that these are two questions and if you solve one of those questions you get three marks so maximum you can obtain six marks okay that's the main thing these are the three types of questions and the first thing gives you okay these are the count of this type of question and this is the marks that you can obtain by solving each of those questions okay so what we need to do given these types we need to tell in how many ways okay how many ways can we obtain the target sum okay <laughs> we can obtain the target sum so now let's see uh, let's see the first example so here i want to earn six points so one of the options could be that i solve six questions of zero type so each question there are six questions of the first type and each will give me one mark so one plus one plus one six times so give you six what is the other option solve four questions of zero type okay so one plus one plus one plus one and solve one question of the second type so that will give you two marks similarly solve two questions of zero type and two questions of the first type so one plus one plus two plus two one one for this and two 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 for this solve three questions of zero type right and one question of the third type solve one question of zero type one question of first type and one question of two types so one two three similarly solve three questions of first type two 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 solve two questions of three type so these are the seven ways okay these are the seven ways in which you can obtain six points okay that is what the problem is asking you to do and what are the constraints so these are similar examples okay <clears throat> if you go to this example as well so you can you want to earn five points and these are the type of questions so how can we obtain five points obviously one way is you solve one of these questions so this this solve one question of second type what could be the other way solve question, five questions of the zero eight type okay five question of the zero eight type so there are 50 questions you can obviously solve five questions okay so each will give you one marks so yes you are good to go solve three questions of zero type you get three from here solve one of this type you get five from here similarly solve just one question of this type and two questions of this type so one two two you get five so these are the only four ways where you can get your answer okay now if i talk about a, a brute force approach okay if you don't know any concept <laughs> if i talk about the brute force approach so how do you approach this type of problem okay so initially you have not solved anything okay initially you have not solved anything now you start picking the first type of question you check that can i solve this question okay can i solve this question so if i solve it what will happen so <coughs> sorry so what do you do you st you uh, let's take this example six one okay so what i do i want to attain a target of 18 okay so now what i will do is initially my target is 18 now if i solve one question of this type okay so i have obtained one marks now i i want to obtain 17 marks 17 more marks and now what is the 
what is the remaining question mark that I have? So out of six, I have solved one. So it's five, one, three, two, and two, three. Right? Now again, you go there. Okay, you go there. And what you can do? So again, there can be multiple ways to solve it. Now again, you can solve this one question at the same time. Or what you can do? You can move here. You can move here. Okay, you have solved one question of the first type. Now come here, solve one question of this type as well. So you obtain two more marks. Okay, so now you have fifteen, and you are left with this. Then you solve one more of one one of this type. So you obtain twelve, and you are left with nothing. At last. You are left with nothing, right? You are left with nothing, and your target is not equals to zero. That means this is not a possible way to solve it. Now, what is the next way to solve it? Now, instead of solving just one question of the first type, right? Let's solve two questions of the first type. Now, you'll obviously start with zero. That you don't solve any types, any question of the first type. But yeah, I'm just giving you example. So suppose you solve two questions of this type. Now, what will happen? You'll have to find sixteen target now because eighteen minus two. Now, you solve one question. Okay, or in this tree only. If I if I talk about this, so you solve one question, solve two question of this type, three question of this type. So it's all about exploring all the possibilities. It will be a tree-like structure. Okay, and that's what you need to do. So this is what you will do, and you will be getting the required answer. Let me first tell you the logic, and then I'll tell you the optimization. So just see, this is the number of questions that I have, or the the type of question, number of types of question that I have. And this is an optimization that we will do. I am saying it an optimization and not saying is dynamic programming because so that people seeing it for the first time <laughs> are able to digest it. Okay, I call a function. Let's call it DFS. I want to obtain this target. These are the type of questions, and I start with the first index. Okay, these are the things that I have. I come to this function. If my target is less than zero, so just see, I am decreasing, right? I am decreasing at every point. If my target becomes zero, that means this is a invalid path. Okay, this is an invalid path. Okay, I want my target to ultimately go to zero, not less than zero. So you return zero. That this path uh, is is not valid, so I'll return zero. If current equals to null, that means you have traversed all the types. You are at the you have traversed all the types, and finally, we'll have index n minus one. We have moved to n. Obviously, n is not valid, right? So if current equals to n and target is zero, so if target is zero, that means it was a valid path. You return one. And if target is not equal to zero, you return zero. Okay, skip this for now. Skip this. Now you initialize your answer equals to zero. Now just see, this is the logic that I was telling you. J equals to zero. J less than equals to types of current zero. Because what I can do if I pick the current type of question, zeroth type for example, then how many questions of that type can I solve? I can solve zero questions of that type. One, two, dot, 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 till the number of The count of those questions, right? Count of i, and what is count of i? Types of current zero. Types of current zero is count. Types of current one is the number of marks that you obtain. So, this is what you do, and ultimately, what happens is just see, answer plus equals to DFS of. So, if you saw, so what do you do? Target minus j into types of this. That if I, if I take j occurrences of this type of question, what is the new target that I want to find the answer for? It's j into types of i. Right, this one. Okay, again you pass the types and current plus one because the total number of questions of type I that I wanted to solve, I have solved it. Now I move to the next type of question. Okay, that is what I want to do. Ultimately, the whole tree will be created. Now answer equals to answer mod this. Simple, right? And uh, this is what you do. Now there will be some condition. When you, whenever you do this type of recursive uh, traversal, what happens? There are trees which are overlapping, meaning so. Uh, there is a possibility that you solve the same problem multiple times okay so what do you do you save the answer for that okay how do you save it you save it like this that dp of this is the array that i have taken current and target means for this particular target if i consider these many types 0 to current type what is my answer what are the number of valid paths okay you save it now whenever you call this function if this is not equals to 1 instead of calculating everything instead of again computing this tree you just return your answer this is the optimization this is known as dynamic programming right so this is what you do okay uh, you this is more of a term used as memoization right a recursive function and you just save your answer in a map in an array wherever you want it and you just return it instead of 
computing it again and again right so that is why what i have done here i have initialized everything by minus one okay this is the 2d error just see 52 into 1002 why 52 into 1002 because the type of question can be uh, 50 i have just taken a value and this can be 1000 to 1002 and we are good to go right so yeah, that's it for this problem a typical dynamic programming problem okay so not much to discuss here if you are aware with uh, the basic concepts you will be good to go okay so i hope you learn something new from this video uh, do support it by giving up thumbs up do subscribe to the channel as well uh, in case uh, you have any queries mention that into the comments i'll revert on each one of them thank you take care bye bye